Hello everyone and a warm welcome back to a very special Directions Live Online. My name is Mary Murphy and I will be your host for today's session. So today we are taking a look at some of the highlights of the 2024 Esri UC brought to you by a couple of very lucky ducks, some people who are lucky enough to be there on the ground. So joining us today to talk all things UC are Chris Lanvot and Tom Gardner. Now, Chris is no stranger to these webinars. Chris is a sector lead for state and local government solution engineering crew that we have in here a lot. And he has a vast wealth of experience across all things geospatial, including land surveying, UAVs, the GIS of it all, and education. Now, Tom might be no stranger to a large number of you as well. Tom's been in the industry for over 25 years. And as of today, I'm reliably informed. Today marks your 21st year exactly, I think, with Esri Australia, Tom. So congrats. Um, so if you want geospatial passion, <laughs> passion and nerdiness and a willingness to and ability to bring location-based solutions to life, you've got a great team of people here in front of you. So look no further. Now, how are you both uh, this morning and this afternoon, I suppose, both sides of the country represented here? How are you, Chris? How are you, Tom? Good, thanks, Mary, and congrats, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks, Mary. Great speaking to you, Chris, as well. <laughs> All right, enough for me. Lots to get <laughs> 21 years young, right? Okay, enough for me. Lots to get through. Going to hand you over, I think, actually to you, Tom. So over to you. Thank you, Mary, and, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for all joining us um, for this webinar today in which Chris and I will be providing some of our highlights um, of our recent visit to San Diego to attend the 2024 ESRI User Conference. At a high level today, we'll be covering the following areas. What um, is the ESRI User Conference um, and what it's like and, what, and why and how um, to go to it if you can. We'll cover updates on changes to some of the ESRI products and solutions and we'll also discuss the top trends that stood out to us over the course of the conference. And finally, um, we'll provide you with some resources at the end of this webinar um, for you guys to use uh, and access to follow up with, um, and hopefully that will be a benefit to you. Oh, wow. Um, so where to start? For me, this is the second time that I've had the opportunity to attend the UC. Um, however, the last one was 18 years ago. Um, having the opportunity to spend an amazing week in San Diego to attend the UC helped remind me of why all of us on this webinar and us in this industry do what we do. We're problem solvers, we're analysts, we're using geography and GIS to help solve little and in many cases big challenges and problems for ourselves, for our organisations and more broadly for our world. And that tied directly into this year's theme for the user conference. Um, it was GIS uniting our world. The US, UC is itself really a true example um, of that with people coming from all corners of the world to attend this event. We saw and heard example after example of how our users are using GIS to connect people, connect organizations, data and systems to make a difference in this world. So let's have a look at the UC by the numbers. Here's a bit of a slide for all of those that like numbers. I'm not going to go through them all with you, but they're big. Um, and like many things in the US, uh, the UC is almost larger than life. It's the biggest GIS conference in the world. Um, we had almost 19,000 attendees from 154 countries, almost like a United Nations of GIS, or even because of the time we've got this, uh, the GIS of Olympic, uh, Olympics of GIS. Over the five days um, of the conference, uh, their ESRI staff, partners, and most importantly, users presented 531 technical workshops, user presentations, and demo theater sessions. There's no way that you could attend them all, um, but we had a pretty a fair crack at doing what we could. There are also over 220 exhibitors in the exhibition area, where I spent quite a lot of time. This area was massive and included booths um, with many of Esri's partners, as well as booths for every single Esri product, solution, capability, and industry sector, where you had the opportunity to speak to the key staff face-to-face. -face. It's like a 3D Teams meeting. Additionally, there were 56 industry and interest group meetings. Um, I managed to attend five. So for each 
and every one of you on the webinar, uh, there would be an opportunity for you to meet up with your industry and inter interest group counterparts and peers from around the world to discuss the topics that are relevant to your industry. Along with the conference, there were many social gatherings, including a massive family night where they opened all the museums and galleries in Balboa Park to all the uh, UC attendees and their families, which was a great event uh, to experience. And finally, for the energetic of us, um, there was also 605 runners and walkers that attended the UC fun run, um, including Chris and myself. Um, kudos to Chris um, on well and truly beating me in the run. And as I say, I guess the UC is an amazing, amazing experience. There's just the small challenge for us here in Australia um, of how to get there. Here's a little kind of animation and map of my journey over to the UC. Travelling from Perth to San Diego was not the most joyous 30 hours of my life, especially if you don't sleep on planes. Um, however, what followed was the most amazing week um, at the world centre of GIS geekdom and networking that you could ever experience. You may ask why you should go to the UC. Um, there are many reasons, but here are just a few. First of all, as I mentioned, face-to-face -face meetings with the product managers and industry reps from Esri. I caught up with people that I've been collaborating with for 20 years now, and some of them previously I'd only virtually met. It really kind of broke down doors and really enabled us to kind of work closer and better together. I saw the same happening with clients of ours as well. Understanding the depth of capabilities that the ArcGIS platform provides um, uh, for so many varying industries, taking inspiration of that and bringing this knowledge back to apply to your work and your organisations can be of fantastic value. Also meeting up with industry representatives from across the globe that are working in your area of expertise. It helps you gain and share insights that are re relevant specifically to you. And also, I guess, meeting up with old friends like this one, possibly. Here's me catching up with an old friend to everyone in the GIS community. Spending just a short time with Jack was a great privilege. If you ever get the opportunity to meet him, it's well, well worth it. Um, and there's the other side kind of activities that you see. Uh, a group of us managed to get out to the baseball before the conference started, um, and it was um, well worth it seeing the Padres win. On a side note, many of you may not be aware that many of your organisations will have access to complimentary tickets to the UC based on your licence holdings. Each ticket is worth well over 3,000 Australian dollars, a great savings for you and your organisation and potentially a good reason to consider heading over to meet Jack yourself. If you want to find out um, if you have any complimentary tickets, please check with your administrator of your MyASRI site or, or give us a call. Anyway, let's cover off in the important parts, the first of the day, which is a plenary session. As mentioned, the conference is five days long. Um, there is actually pre-conference training sessions and sector-focused seminars on the weekend prior to the conference, including the GIS Manager Summit that some of you might find of interest. But the five-day conference is, is amazing. The first day, the whole of the day, is taken up with a plenary session, which is held in three parts in a room that fits literally thousands upon thousands of attendees. Uh, there are many things covered in the plenary, and next I'll provide you a snapshot of some of the user presentations from up on the big stage. To me, the user presentations are some of the key highlights of the plenary day, and the user conference is really about you guys, the users. I've picked out three that I found of great interest. However, there are many more that you can watch on the plenary videos that Esri has already released. These three should help provide you with some insight to the ways that GIS is being used by users across the globe and also in our region. Firstly, uh, shout out to the URA and NParks, um, the Urban Redevelopment Authority and National Parks Board of Singapore. Um, they've been using the ArcGIS platform in a number of areas including having a, a complete um, countrywide 3D digital twin modelling, um, you know, enabling to model and visualise and do scenario planning um, across the whole of Singapore. This includes the ability to start doing modelling and analysis of um, heat islands and uh, flows of uh, wind through proposed developments like we can see up there on that screen. Now, in, and in collaboration with NParks, NParks is actually running a web-based GIS asset management system um, using ArcGIS and Microsoft's Dynamics CRM 
where they've actually mapped the location of over 6 million trees across Singapore, um, every single one of them with an asset identifier, and are using this to actually model um, the real world environment and identify areas where additional greening is required to actually um, improve the, the sustainability and keeping the island of Singapore um, uh, sustainable and cooler um, in these challenging climatic times. The second is the Crown Estate in the UK. They manage a portfolio of land and sea um, around England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, they actually have an application called RIO, um, which enables you to perform multi-criteria analysis um, to look at all the costs and constraints for 12 different sectors and scenarios um, for the seabed around the United Kingdom. This is being used to try and look at the, uh, the intersection of multiple use cases and, and challenging kind of areas uh, and issues that um, the Crown Estate is using to identify best locations for suitability analysis for location of wind farms and understanding potentially the impact of those wind farms on other um, industries that may want to use that same area, such as fishing and so on. So they actually display, dis showed how they actually go through their whole multi-criteria analysis and used literally a, a physical and visual representation up on the stage that you can see on that screen to understand how these different kind of criteria analysis tools are being used in, in real uh, examples to help them plan for the future and support the move to net zero for the UK. And finally, um, the third one that I saw of great interest was the presentation from um, the governor of Minnesota, um, Governor Waltz. Um, we actually listened to, what did we call him, a, a geographically literate governor. Imagine having like a state premier um, here in Australia who actually has a deep and, and thorough understanding of the use of geography and GIS and applying the science um, to actually improve the, the performance of your state um, uh, in the areas of environmental, social and economic kind of governance. So there was a presentations and discussions of how they're doing work to manage climate change within Minnesota, working uh, to improve the social well-being for families and children, um, and also de developing the economy to improve the actual uh, economic development and workforce. Seeing GIS used um, for region and nation devising, defining projects like these and delivering benefits to the bro broader society was really wonderful to witness. Now, um, the key reason that I was lucky enough to attend the UC this year was to support one of the rare customers here in our region that was awarded ESRI's Special Achievement in GIS Award, or the SAG Awards, as we call them, ARC Infrastructure. Um, uh, shout out to Nadia. Um, you can see Nadia and Jack in the top left-hand corner receiving her award. Um, we actually had two other representatives from ARC Infrastructure with us um, to attend the conference, and we had the opportunity to actually arrange a number of special meetings with um different representatives from ESRI to actually support the queries that that client had. I'm happy to do that with any of you that want to go over next year. Uh, they, along with other organisations listed on this slide, were the rare few in, in the ESRI Australia and ESRI South Asia group to be recognised for their industry leading and industry defining GIS projects. ESRI provides SAG awards each year, and, but only over to about 200 organisations out of the 680,000 organisations that have ESRI technology. It was wonderful to see these amazing projects that have been recognised at this international stage. And a special shout out should also be made to Geoscience Australia and the Digital Atlas of Australia. They made it um, to Jack's plenary slides. Um, and Megan uh, was presenting at one of the sessions during the uh, conference. For those that may not have come across the Digital Atlas of Australia yet, the Atlas is a central online platform for authoritative national data sets, so it was right at home at this year's UC. Now let's hear more about the highlights of the products and tools that were covered off during the conference. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Tom. So I, I came at the UC as I guess from a solution engineering perspective and so I was looking for product changes, new capabilities, solutions to solve some of the spatial problems that I see in our, our clients and the UC didn't disappoint. I could have spent the whole week alone on that partner expo floor 
talking to the talking to our partners around the way they're utilizing the esri technology in their solutions but let's have a quick look at what's new starting with arcgs pro which is our flagship desktop software some highlights that stood out for me from the uc and you'll see on the left hand side of the screen you can now perform flood simulation in 3d scenes using your own elevation surfaces and building models to model water flow in emergency scenarios. So it allows you to control the parameters to simulate perhaps how water is added through rainfall. So it might be 20 mils per hour up to 1,000 mils per hour or water source points, so a busted water main or something like that. You can introduce barriers and channels to redirect flow and simulate the introduction of uh, levees. And you can change parameters such as infiltration and evaporation um, in that model. The other highlight for me was looking at the use of oriented imagery in scenes. So taking a step back, oriented imagery in ArcGIS is the various types of imagery such as oblique or 360 degree street side and inspection imagery. And if you look on the right hand side of the screen you can see a drone photo in oblique um, with the perspective shown in the scene on the left hand side. A really good example of this was also in the plenary where Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado was used to demonstrate a similar capability on a larger scale and uh, quite a quite a extraordinary example of that. A couple of smaller things but well received. Uh, you can use, use hyperlinks in layouts and reports which was met by applause in uh, in one of the sessions and there's a new tool which I've seen much requested where you can export attachments uh, at within a geoprocessing tool and sort them into folders and that was well received as well. One of the other neat things about Esri UC is attending the what's coming sessions for each of the products where basically the product manager sits up the front and demonstrates the new features or provides a bit of a roadmap as to what's coming for that software. For me, the Parcel Fabric one was a bit of a highlight where it was very, very audience uh, participation heavy um, to decide the best feature out of a duel, which they called UFC, Ultimate Fabric Competition, where two of the product team would demonstrate capabilities and it was up to the audience to, to determine which was the better capability. Lots of fun. But back to Pro, uh, some things that are coming, I know deep learning is already here in ArcGIS Pro, but what's coming is a bunch of new models, uh, including Prithvi and Climax, which have dropped in the last few months, and an expanding GIAI library. So a new tool, Extract Features Using AI Models, allows you to string these different models together and integrate with some of the other tools in ArcGIS Pro. Just on the screen, I've got an example in my hometown of Castlemaine, which I've just used the text SAM model to extract cars from some aerial imagery. The great thing about this is the only input into that model was me writing cars. ArcGIS Pro does the work in figuring out what I'm asking for and creates the polygon and it's done a pretty amazing job on that, especially given some of the cars are hiding under trees, etc. Some of the other things coming, AI assistance to help you navigate the interface and in, uh, run the tools. Uh, NoSQL support, so using non-relational databases support is coming, so that might be Elasticsearch or OpenSearch. And not only can you ingest those databases in ArcGIS Pro, you can publish them up to ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise as well. Unified Metadata Editor, this covers not just ArcGIS Pro, but Enterprise and Online. So Esri have determined that what users want is a singular metadata editing experience regardless of what product you're using and that's going to be delivered in the near future in this unified metadata editor. Another small thing that people have been requesting is print layouts from Pro can now be published to ArcGIS Online and used as a tool in ArcGIS Online. That's currently in beta so be sure to check that out if that interests you. One of the Broader themes or trends at UC was allowing GIS users to complete more tasks in the web browser rather than using heavier desktop apps such as ArcGIS Pro. Good example of this is in the editing space where the most recent ArcGIS Online update in June had the web editor added in. What this provides is simplicity and an editing focused interface. And to be honest, I've, I've used this quite a bit now and I think it's it's easier to use than ArcGIS Pro for those quick edits. And I, I sort of see myself defaulting to this a little bit more. 
It provides more editing tools compared to what we currently have in the map viewer. And the roadmap that was detailed provides uh, some more advanced editing, editing tools in the, in the near future. I'll show you a quick example of this. This is down on uh, coastal Victoria in Torquay. And I'll just jump back to my screen. Sorry about that. You can access the web editor through the quick access toolbar at the top. And I'm just going to load a map that I've got saved in my ArcGIS Online account. And it's accessible in that web editor. First thing it's going to do is tell me which layers I can edit. Uh, I've got a WMS from Victorian government in there that I can't edit. So I'm just going to turn that off. It's got a select by attributes tool, so I'm just going to go to the lots and select lots that are less than 1,000 square meters, just to show that capability. And it's quickly done that select by attributes for me. I could do bulk attribute updates on that, but I'm just going to clear that selection for now. You have a bunch of snapping options in this editor, so I can snap to all layers or a subset of layers that I specify. In this example, I'm just gonna select one feature and show you some of the editing tools specific to polygons. So I can do an attribute update on that polygon, see how quickly that side panel pops up, make the edit. That's been updated. I can edit the vertices, move that polygon, reshape it. In this example, I'll just do a quick split to demonstrate that snapping capability diagonally across the lot. It's a little bit strange, but we'll just process that. And it's been processed. With this, it's a little bit hard to demonstrate, but there's a bunch of shortcut keys which enable some of the editing workflows. Uh, you've got copy features, What's coming soon is the ability to trace uh, true curve support, extend trim lines, copy parallel, some branch versioning, 3D and more snapping uh, granularity as well. A lot of things that we can currently only do in ArcGIS Pro are coming to this editor. Across to our field mobility space, I was fortunate enough to be in the, a lot of the field map sessions and that product continues to evolve and support more workflows. The integration demos with the Microsoft Teams were some of the standout demonstrations I saw through the week. So I'd really recommend checking out a few of those uh, field map sessions if you get the chance. Onto the product, there's some new capabilities which we can already enjoy on the latest version of ArcGIS field maps. And a lot of these enhancements you'll see in the web designer which is now a really powerful tool for setting up maps uh, for you to use in the field. Just to name a few, read-only maps is now supported. A really important one that I've seen, uh, especially coming from a support background, is the enhanced offline checks in Web Designer. So those checks in the Web Designer have been expanded to ensure that if you're going to be syncing back and forth uh, from offline to online, that you're not likely to uh, encounter issues and if you are it's going to identify those in those checks also a nice one is uh, mobile map packages which are currently only able to be created in ArcGIS Pro then side loaded onto field maps will soon be supported in the web designer the big news from the field maps team uh, and this is a little bit under wraps but they are like in the next year uh, the app will see a little bit of a refresh and I'm building on a new SDK. It doesn't mean it's a migration piece. It's just a much cleaner and more performant UX UI. What I saw was a lot easier access to those related records, linking with Survey123, some better markup, things like dynamic uh, geofences and some offline utility network support. And maybe most importantly, uh, a much requested feature is tasks. So being able to assign tasks to your workers, dispatch through dashboards experiences, and etc. So watch that space. I understand it's coming next year. 
Next, uh, ArcGIS Enterprise continues to evolve as a product and the next release is scheduled for October of this year and that's 11.4. And a full roadmap was talked about through to version 12 late next year. A few of the highlights for me uh, were, and some big news around ArcGIS Velocity. If you're not aware, it's a cloud native add-on capability currently only for ArcGIS Online. It allows users to feed live data from Internet of Things platforms or a third-party API so they can be ingested into your ArcGIS system. This is coming into ArcGIS Enterprise in beta in November, so keep an eye out for that. Some smaller things, maybe one for the admins out there. ArcGIS Enterprise no longer will no longer re rely on the license manager server when you're using pro and portal licenses. Uh, and that sort of coincides with the new user types as well. A lot of talk and capabilities were around allowing more granularity on which components of ArcGIS Enterprise you put in the cloud. For instance, the object store. There was also a lot of discussion around support for uh, cloud native databases such as Azure database for PostgreSQL. And um, there's a lot of capabilities already there, but a lot on the roadmap as well. Finally, on in the enterprise space, ArcGIS Enterprise for Kubernetes was discussed at length as well. Uh, and the messaging around this is it's not just for huge organizations and they see this thing as growing in suitability for, for large to medium organizations as well. Some new features in that space, the ability to federate a workflow manager server site uh, sitting on Windows or Linux. There's some interesting administration tools where you can increase the volume to size of object stores, relational stores, and spatiotemporal index stores from within the ArcGIS Enterprise Manager, and some new capabilities with image and raster um, analytics as well, with a few more to come. Just another thing that came up was the Well-Architected Framework website. This has been live for a few months now, and this provides a detailed guide designed to help you and your organizations efficiently design, build, and operate ArcGIS systems. And it's really written with an IT user in mind using broad I guess, industry accepted language rather than GIS specific language. So uh, it's a really useful guide for those administrators as well. We'll provide a resource in the, in the notes. Finally, for me, a lot of the excitement at UC was around the work done by Esri to couple our capabilities with the Microsoft products. And I think this is maybe most evident when I tried to go to the Microsoft Fabric session midway through the user conference and the crowd was spilling out of the room, I couldn't actually see the screen. Just briefly on that, Microsoft Fabric is pitched as an end-to-end -end analytics and data platform designed for enterprise. So Microsoft in that product uses the spatial analytics capabilities from ArcGIS, as well as some of the pre-curated spatial data. So watch that space for the release of, of Fabric. Onto our Microsoft 365 products. ArcGIS for our Excel, this has been around for about three or four months now, and you can connect to ArcGIS services in Excel and use that interface as a pseudo attribute table to visualize and map within the Excel interface. For Power BI, SharePoint, and Power Automate, kind of the same theme where we're bringing those ArcGIS capabilities in the Microsoft products, uh, bringing the ArcGIS capabilities to those Microsoft products that we generally own and use every day already. Finally, I just want to highlight Teams. So the Teams ArcGIS plugin allows you to draw maps, collaborate, and share data. You may have already used it, but one thing that was demonstrated on top of this is the ArcGIS for Teams Copilot plugin, currently in public preview, and it allows you natural language, natural language queries and AI search to discover layers and build maps. And I saw this in a lot of sessions where they're using it to orchestrate workflows, develop applications for non-GIS users. It was, it was pretty good to, to look at and I'd encourage you getting on, on that public preview if you can. That's, uh, that's it from the product space. I'm gonna hand back to Tom now. Tom? Thanks, Chris. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Um, there were there some great updates to see and hear about um, and kind of refreshed my mind of a, a lot of the things we saw at the UC, which is fantastic. Now to look into, I guess, some key trends um, that we picked up over the course of the conference. The first of those really being AI. Um, now, Chris has kind of talked, uh, and we've talked to a, um, a little bit about AI so far um, in this session, but 
AI was talked a lot about at the UC. Um, um, Esri is not an AI company. Um, however, AI is starting to pervade um, the ArcGIS platform in two key areas, Geo AI and the Geo and AI assistance. From the Geo AI space, it's not new to Esri. We've had tools and models um, for feature extraction and analytics, um, some of which have been around for well over nine years. Um, however, there are a number of ways that Geo AI is being used um, and extended within the ArcGIS platform, um, including new foundation models, deep learning wizards, AI assisted labeling, um, uh, uh, some pre-trained models, especially kind of extensions to those pre-trained models, um, and large language models for text kind of uh, um, uh, detection and character recognition. And, and coming down the pipe, there's a whole um, load more um, foundational models, um, some deep learning on oriented imagery and 3D meshes, which will be really interesting to see, um, and more pre-trained models to fit into different scenarios across the space. What I found probably more interesting um, myself was seeing the AI assistance. These are features that will be coming shortly, um, but were demonstrated on the big stage, so you can see videos of it. Um, however, um, they have been shown how Ezra is planning to utilise uh, AI, AI assistants or kind of mini kind of bots to provide support for users um, in doing their mapping, answering questions, um, identifying and doing documentation and search, as well as um, technical support um, spaces. You can see some of the examples on the right hand side of the slide here um, for images uh, that were rendered within um, effectively um, a web-based interface, um, which you see like the map viewer there. However, it's actually using a chat interface and requesting um, the actual chat to actually do the rendering or, or pick the appropriate rendering methodology based on the fields that are in the actual data. So um, you've got um, one there that's just highlighting the areas um, where there's um, a high heat and another one that's doing a, a multivariate analysis. Um, and both of those have been effectively um, supported by um, the AI assistants. So more of that to see in the future, which is exciting. On the 3D side of things, um, I really see 3D as a trend that's uh, becoming more and more apparent, especially to, uh, to a number of the clients I'm, I, I work with. Um, and 3D is kind of um, growing in its um, capabilities across the platform. Um, there was a really good presentation uh, by um, of Zurich's um, 3D Living Twin by um, Esri's Gert van Maren. Um, he's, he was a great presenter. Um, it's well worth a watch if you haven't already seen it. Um, there's a couple of pictures from that on, on the slides here. But also, I guess, working with clients across the country, um, I've seen really a strong uptick in their interest in application of 3D and digital twins within their GIS environments. And this kind of um, coupled in with the integration um, and further work done with GIS and BIM, um, as well as showcasing integrated 3D web applications with ServiceNow and other things, um, and, and web-based editing really are starting to actually um, progress the use and application of uh, 3D in that space. Another great example we actually saw Chris um, demonstrate a bit earlier on was the, the new flood simulation tools um, up on the top left. From an industry perspective, um, is it a trend? Well, I guess it's probably more of a kind of a, a reminder to myself and reminder to you all about the fact that um, ArcGIS platform really provides a comprehensive imagery system. Um, you know, I've witnessed over the last 10 years or so a huge growth in the application and capabilities of imagery um, within the ArcGIS platform. And, and this was really highlighted um, to see, you know, the value of um, imagery, uh, be that captured from drone, aerial or satellite platforms, as well as how it's being used um, through reality mapping, analytics, and also visualization um, for customers um, and alike. We've actually had some feedback from Esri um, that a number of our users here in Australia are leading um, some of the use and applications of imagery in many ways. So, you know, go for it, Australia. Um, on connectivity and collaboration, which kind of uh, pour, comes back to the whole GIS uniting our world um, uh, concept is, is, is really key to see. Um, and the whole kind of application and, and extension use of global geospatial infrastructure has been really, really important and plays a key role in, in almost um, supporting being a system of systems that opens up information to all, um, linking data from local, state, federal and, and um, international organisations. Here's a number of them that were highlighted at the UC plenary, including the Digital Atlas of Australia, as well as the City of Sydney's um, 
um, open data site. Um, providing the ability to connect data and systems together is a key benefit of GIS. Um, and, and finally, from, from my side of things, a final trend to talk about uh, for, is really how I've, I've seen ESRI work on streamlining access uh, and reducing the barriers to using um, the ArcGIS platform. Um, that includes like the simplifying of license, licensing and administration, as shown a bit on the slide here. Um, but we, we've done a couple of webinars already around that whole licensing space. So if, if, if um, it is worth looking at um, if this is new to you, so you can go and check, check back and listen to those in specific. But, but I guess we've already talked about AI across the system, but we're seeing AI being used um, to actually help in prompting workflows, tool use, um, and tool finding, as well as map production. For example, out of the box, intuitive deep learning capabilities. Um, so you don't need to jump in as an expert. You can actually use the knowledge and models that are being created to help support your work, um, which is which is fantastic. And as we've seen uh, with Chris's presentation earlier on, that whole simplified editing workflow and process, such as the web editor, I have a feeling that that's actually going to grow um, uh, significantly over time, uh, and that looks like a really, really great tool. We, you know, we may see more people using the web editor as a primary kind of source of um, the editing processes. There are also more um, free learning resources that Esri provides, and, and these are some of the things that are already in place and being updated consistently. And it's kind of great to see, I believe, the community here contributing to what these things um, should and do look like. Um, so yeah, that that's some fantastic kind of um, Kind of high level overview and insight of some of those trends. But um, finally, if you're wanting to put your case up to your management um, uh, to t attend um, the user conference, Ezra actually provides information, including like a, a letter of, of support um, uh, to help you support your business case. Um, and and yeah, don't forget to check to see if you have complimentary tickets because that's a huge kind of um, reduce in the cost it is to get to the UC. So yeah. So that's almost it from us. Um, if my young family would allow it, I'd love to be back at Esri UC next year and it'd be great to see you too. Um, Esri UC dates for 2025 are set for the 14th till the 18th. So pop it in your diary. And on that note, I'm going to pass back to you, Mary. Yeah, cheers, guys. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, as always, our, our UC sessions always a little longer than our traditional sessions. So, but you still managed to jam in so much. So thank you very much. Tom, I was talking about this with you earlier as well. Is that something that we don't talk about? The fact is lots of you, the users, the people who are tuned in, you probably don't realize you are, first off, doing amazing work in GIS, right? The work you're doing is important and amazing. And it's also worthy of inspiring others. So don't be afraid to put your hand up to not only just try and go, right? But to try and get yourself on a stage, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, it's a user's conference. It, it's about um, uh, the, the other people at the end of this webinar rather than ourselves. It's, um, yeah. uh, that's, where I, where I, where, that's where I see all the value um, and, and mm. getting people and having that opportunity to share information and experiences and, and talk to others. Uh, and showcase okay. it. Um, you know, we had a number of um, uh, organisations and people presenting um, across the, the the kind of the. It's actually seven days at the user conference because there were some presentations that were done in some of the uh, pre-conference seminars by by mm -hmm. um, clients here in Australia. Um, fantastic opportunity um, to you know um, put put a paper up, um, get the opportunity to present, and even on the big stage. You know, we've had num numbers of customers up on the big stage. Um, um, in recent years, and it, it would be great to showcase, you know, the fantastic work that's being done here in Australia and in region um, on Absolutely, the world stage. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Your work is worthy of inspiring others. Okay, so we'll jump into those questions in a moment. We'll only have a few minutes for them, but I'll get through as many as I can. Um, so type them into the question pane now if, uh, for another minute or so while you still have a chance. Before we jump into those questions, uh, the guys gave me a really tough task. They wanted me to put some resources together. So um, how do you put so many resources together for the UC? So I had to think about you guys. So what do we want to do as users? What do we want to get out broadly? So we all want to inspire and be inspired. So the UC recordings, definitely worth checking them out. The team are doing an amazing job of pushing out the content. So the plenaries are already there. They've pulled sections out of the plenary if you don't have all day to rewatch all the sessions. So some of those case studies that guys were talking about have already been pulled out. 
connecting again, big theme this year. The ArcGIS Architecture Center, I think is definitely worth checking out, whether you're an IT person or not like myself, um, because understanding how they connect and so on is very important. There's also an Esri Academy course that goes quite well with that topic, which is, oh, I think, the systems approach to ArcGIS. Um, it's free. It's four hours long. It's really good. I've been, I have one hour left to do. I'm going to finish it, uh, but it's definitely worth doing. The collaboration side of things, you can't go further than the Esri community. Chat with the other product managers, chat with each other, talk about workflows, help each other out, get some ideas. The innovate side of things, I think something that was mentioned by Chris earlier and is relatively new, might be quite a new space for a lot of you guys. So it might be worth having a look at is the spatial analytics in Microsoft Fabric and learning, 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 growing, right? Uh, the MOOCs, the massive open online courses are a great place to go to. Um, they are on the Esri Academy. They are free. You can get access to the technology for the duration of the actual course. I know there's an analytics one coming up in the next couple of weeks. They also cover imagery, drone related items. Um, they cover oh, cartography, uh, web apps, I think as well. And they're always adding to those. So definitely worth going in there. So these will be obviously available for you to see in the recording if you didn't get to grab the uh, QR codes now. Okay, enough for me. Let's get through some of the questions that have come through. Okay, so I'm gonna throw um, a quick question to the guys. Um, um, you said, I think there was 531 sessions of some sort. Tom, Chris, what was your plan of attack? Had you an idea of what you wanted to attend? How did you get to execute on that? Did you get to execute on that? How did <laughs> we go? Good question. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a bit like a kid in a candy shop, Mary, to be honest. Um, uh, <laughs> The, the the great thing with the user conferences, Esri provides um, like a schedule uh, and an app. So I went through and identified all the um, sessions that I wanted to attend. Um, the challenge being, I, th I think I had in some instances five or six um, parallel sessions to try and attend. Um, the convention center is like six or 700 meters long. So trying to get to them all and be there at the same time um, really just didn't work. Um, if, you know, I don't have a cape or anything. Um, so... <laughs> Like, luckily enough, we had um, a number of people from Esri Australia, so we actually divided and conquered to a bit. Um, and, and also, if the session was going to be recorded, in some instances, I, I didn't attend that one because I wanted to go to the, the some of the user yeah. sessions and find out what was what. So yeah, but uh, it was a hard one to keep on top of it, but 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 well worth it. We did a pretty good job, I think. Chris, about you, Chris? Um, yeah, I had a pretty packed schedule as well. I was fortunate enough to put aside about a day and a half just to do sessions, and I had a bit of a focus on uh, Parcel Fabric and ArcGIS Enterprise and Field Mobility. So I was, I was really glad to be able to get to those what's coming sessions and get a bit of an idea of what's in the pipeline in the products. Um, it was really, I'd spent a lot of time on the on the expo floor, just talking to partners and talking to product teams and, and advocating on behalf of some of the things our customers are asking for as well. Brilliant. Okay, let's jump into some questions. I'm just conscious of time. Let's try and get maybe five minutes. I'm going to keep you for an extra five minutes, Chris and Tom, if that's okay. And let's get through some questions. Sure. Okay, Jamie, <laughs> a lot of talk about AI in the slides. Any examples where they're being used in real world applications that you saw? Well, this is a Chris question. Yeah, I can maybe, uh, and Tom didn't cover, cover it, but in the plenary, there was a, a Miami Dade County Open Data Hub, they had this AI chat box, which I think a lot of the population of that county is multilingual or um, only speaks Spanish. So it was an opportunity for them to interact with the data and the maps uh, in that Open Data Hub and get the answer they need despite not uh, speaking the language that that data was, uh, was stored in. I think it's in the plenary, so check that out if you get a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah that good. And good that one. Yeah, and I think the Kuwait team as well did something. I think I was chatting with you about this earlier. Um, they were talking about using um, the AI techniques, the extraction techniques yep. to figure out I think it was bumps in the road, speed bumps and things as well, which was cool. Awesome. Question from Lee. Was there a lot of attention around uh, image dedicated or many customer stories related to that? This is probably Chris again. Yeah, I can, uh, I can think of a few examples. Maybe... I think it was the distributor summit. So just before Esri UC, it came up a little bit that uh, our Australian customers are actually leading the way with image dedicated. And that was obviously really good to hear that our customers are at the forefront of that technology. 
yeah. I think I can mention error metrics came up in that example. And I think there was a webinar previously, maybe the last couple of months, Mary, where that, that partnership was covered and, and is that, that's yeah. correct? Yep. Yeah. 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 Error metrics uh, with MetroMap are doing great things in that space. So it's actually, that's, such a great question um so if there is a, an entire webinar on that because again like you said the aussie crew here you're doing a great job of leading the way in a lot of the image management side of space in let alone just imagery at all so um yeah we had linda in from that and she spoke about what they're doing how they're using it why they're using it etc so actually there's an entire webinar on a particular customer story excellent um another question here from peter oh good one will the web editor support editing of utility networks uh, Who yeah, i can try and answer that one as well uh it it will eventually i've seen the roadmap and i from memory i think it's on the midterm roadmap so the the idea is it will eventually support branch versioning utility networks and perhaps parcel fabric as well so a lot of those what we call yeah advanced editing capabilities yeah we've had some sneaky chats with the web editor team and i know we're going to be doing one maybe more web uh webinars on that podcast and so on as well and i know from having sneaky chats with them that that absolutely is in the roadmap so that is coming um which is great uh, good question. Question from Ori. Where can I find the recordings from the Esri Spatial Analytics Summit, which was part of the conference? Could only find the recordings from the plenary. Yeah, um, I'll look into that actually, Ori, because I'm interested in those myself. Uh, so if I can find where those recordings are and when they are, etc., we will um, let you guys know. Absolutely. Um, but they will typically be through that media space link, um, which I provided previously. Um, or they might put them into a separate folder in that location as well. But good question. I'll, I'll follow that up with uh, Lauren and the team and see if I can get that information for you as well. Um, here's a, a question from an old colleague of ours from Kieran. Hello, Kieran. Uh, if you had to watch one presentation back, which one would it be? So that is a great question. I can go first okay, on that one. Uh, yeah. I'll have to follow up with the exact name of it, but it was an afternoon session with AI and large language models, which had some uh, using Maps SDK for JavaScript to integrate with an open AI service and just the way that you could do so much um, using a language model in the background and the Maps SDK for JavaScript was, mm. was uh, mind-blowing, to be honest. How about you, Tom? Oh, for me... Um, uh, um... Good and um, Andreas um, did it from the Esri team did a presentation on how they actually created that 3D um, um, demo for um, Zurich and went into a whole lot of more detail around it and I'm I'm a bit of a 3D tragic I think it is in the GIS space um, uh, I know that one was recorded as well which will hopefully those technical sessions that were recorded will come out soon uh, kind of following back to Ari's question. Mary, so yeah, um, actually, yeah, Kieran, I thank you very that. much, Kieran. Okay, Kieran think, has oh, just put Kieran, a sorry. thing in. Sorry, Kieran yeah. has just put a thing in saying it's coming out in a few weeks. So thank you, Kieran. No, there you go. So, yeah. All right, yeah, jumping it. Kieran, thank you very much. You're always very helpful. All right, um, I have enough time, I think. Let's chance one, maybe two more questions. Okay, two questions. These are the last two questions. Ashwood, with desktop functionality now getting pushed into the web environment and the pending deprecation of concurrent licensing at the desktop level, will Esri seek compensate licensing or subscription usage, usage via a web interface for a larger audience? Well, that's a big question, and an, yeah. I don't know what the, the easy answer is for that, right? Because there's a lot of moving parts. What are, what yeah. are your thoughts? Um, I, I remember because the distributor summit that... Um, Chris mentioned earlier on is like an internal for distributors meeting. So we get a little bit privy information from Esri. Um, we can probably share. We can't share too much, <laughs> right? Unfortunately. Um, however, yeah. you know, licensing and, and making the licensing uh, easier um, um, to manage in the future is definitely something I think that we'll see um, improve um, for kind of um, web license management it is probably the best way of putting it. Um, um, I'm not really sure around um, time frames around that, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I can see probably thing. kind of, yeah, it's not a short term thing, but um, I, I think watch this space will be interesting to see where it goes because I think more and more people will be potentially using a web interface, which may actually, Correct, there's still yeah. a, a, a real need to use a proper G desktop GIS to do the real and true GIS, but it's more of extending that editing capability out mm. to a broader user base. 
yeah, I suppose it's not, that's never going to be a hard cut off, right? It's never going to be a hard cut over to, from the desktop to the web, right? It's, it's always going to follow what the actual, the usage patterns are. And those usage patterns are driven by you, the users, right? Okay, last question from Nick of finishing on a doozy. If 11.4, so Enterprise 11.4 is a short-term release, why should we upgrade Enterprise to 11.4 other than to take advantage of the new user types? <laughs> Who wants to try this one? Chris, you want to have I a can, go? I can go a little bit, maybe. Um, I would say with those short-term releases that, uh, and we we don't know the release notes for 11.4. We do know the user types are coming. If there are capabilities in 11.4 that you you really need, and as, as an organisation, I'd recommend updating. Just I guess taking a step back from I think it was version 11, the even numbered releases are the short short term Correct. and the odd numbers yep. are the long term so 11.5 will be released in the first part of 2025 so if it's not something that you need um, maybe you could consider looking at a long-term release um, yeah, it's not much of a sales pitch for 11.4 but that's kind of <laughs> where i would stand if i was if i was administering that's yeah. I, I guess going back to that question from nick um I've seen a number of um, clients that actually have a kind of a, a, a dual fuel approach to GIS where they're using ArcGIS online and enterprise. Um, yeah. Obviously, online gets the latest and greatest capability, first and foremost. Um, and so if you're wanting to then deliver that capability or closest to it back into your organization, um, that's probably a, one of the drivers that you would see around wanting to move to 11.4. Um, to actually leverage that within the enterprise um, stack within within your premises uh, for want of a better space um, or, or term. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, good yeah. on you. Yeah. Final thank you again to Chris and Tom. Thank you to you, to everyone for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again soon for our next Directions Live online.